Welcome to Watercolor and Wonder. Thanks for joining again in our nature study series of invertebrates. Today we're going to be documenting a crawdad or a crayfish, depending on where you're from. Um, so we will be just again observing a from painting from a photo and translating that into our nature journals. And this video will just help you with the form. This is a little bit more complicated figure than we have done so far and help you with the form and colors. And uh, you can join me as I paint and paint along with me as we enter that into our journals today. Thanks. So we're drawing a crawdad or a crayfish today. This is definitely the most complex creature we have documented so far in this series. So right off the bat, go ahead and decide you could give yourself a lot of grace. This is about observing carefully not perfecting beauty and form. So we're going to do our best to just look at the shapes as we start. So I'm gonna start with the oval of the body. Also, can we just say how cool these creatures look? What a neat thing that we get to observe. All right, so we've got this oval shape. We're just gonna get it into its basic shape here. And then I'm going to add the claws as two more ovals. I've got one coming up here. I'm just gonna get that very loosely in and another one over here. We're gonna add these ovals, a little oval here, a little oval here, and then another one here and another one here. Do you see how by doing that we get the, the basic shape of the form? We can fill in the details from there, but if we get this basic shapes nailed down first, everything else will be more proportionate and accurate. I'm gonna also make some rectangles for the legs. I need to pay attention to what I'm actually looking at. And we've got another one right here and a rectangle coming back here. Same on this side, we're gonna get essentially rectangles for the legs. Also, good job on having the guts to try something that I, I mean, honestly, I'll be honest, I tried to do one of these a couple years ago and I was so frustrated, I abandoned it. I was so, I just thought it was so neat. I was so excited to try, but I didn't really have a lot of skill or guidance into what to do, so I left it. So I've added the eyes, and the little things, the nodules for the antenna. I'm gonna go ahead and just pencil those in as well. Okay, let's go back and add some details now. We've got the parts to the body. We've got this main one. I can see it starts right here at the first leg, this curve like a C shape, and it comes down to here and then curves back up and hits right about where that claw touches the body. I've got the other one, the other main one where the tail begins. I'm gonna make sure that this part is a little more rounded. And then our tail kind of comes off at a slightly different angle and it has several of these nodules, bumps over here on the side. I can see about four before it disappears into the water. And then a C-shaped line is gonna come off of each of those. I can only see a little hint of one on that on the left side. All right, there's our body and our tail. I'm gonna make, let's see, we can also draw these. We have this V coming up here, right by the eyes. We wanna make sure we don't miss. That's a pretty distinct detail. And then the, let's go on to the claws now. Right here, it starts, see how, I, as I was drawing it now, I can see I didn't put the claw in the exact right spot because it starts actually at the eye. So I'm gonna move it. I'm just gonna make it come right here. That's why we pencil it in, right? And then we also, I treat it like, I think I mentioned in a prior video about a clock. If you are painting around like a circular place and you get to the, the six o'clock or the 12 o'clock and your parts don't line up, you can just realign them. So I'm looking at the eye I'm seeing that the claw begins here and it also hits right here. So I'm gonna move that. Simple as that. And then 
Got a little joint, like a triangle shape to turn it. Then we have this, still mostly an oval shape coming out. I'm not gonna have a lot of the technical terms for today's painting. You scientists out there can document all that in your journals. And then this is gonna turn into another kind of, oh, there's a one oval here, and then the claws are gonna come up out of that. The pinchers, I guess I should, that's probably not a scientific term either. We artists are doing the best we can, right? You scientists help us out, artists help you out. Now I'm gonna take a step back and say, okay, does that look like the way I want it to look? Yeah, I pretty much, I'm, I'm pleased, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with this shape. Let's move over to this claw. Now again, I've gotta move it because I started it way down here, but it actually, it's a little lower than the other one. It's between the eye and where the body joins. So I'm gonna start this right here and here. And it's gonna kind of fan out we're gonna add this triangle type shape for the joint to turn it. We've got another, almost a like a smiley face C-shaped here. And then this oval for that part of the claw. Then we're gonna draw this end in. It's gonna bulge way out, right? It's gonna like a smashed oval. We're gonna flatten it to get that idea that it's turned over. So my oval's facing this direction. And then we don't see as much of the pincher part here. It's just that and this to end up. All right, that's our basic form. I do need to go back now and adjust our legs, right? So that first leg is starting right here. Need to make sure we put everything. I'm looking at the shape between, between the claw and between the first leg, and that's what I'm gonna base this on. And then we turn it in. I'm just gonna erase this, because I just didn't get it right the first time, right? That's okay. And then this leg begins, I'm looking at the body, it begins about here. Sometimes the the problem can be the placement of the, the part you're trying to draw. Sometimes it can also be the size. Like maybe I didn't get it proportionate to the size these legs really are the first time I sketched it. And then I'm also looking that this leg ends right here where these two meet. So that's on track. This comes around, I can see, coming out on the rock behind. And then the last leg it's about halfway down the body. I'm just gonna draw those rectangle shapes in, a little triangle for the joint, turn back up, and draw each of those little joints. The other leg, it's a little lower on this side. Another joint, rectangle, turn, and then we draw the foot. I'm gonna erase all those, I just didn't get them that first time through. So this first leg on this side is lower, starts right where the head and the body, the main part of the body meet. We have this rectangle coming out and then turning back up, it should go right into the middle of this. The second leg meets it there. We just have a little triangle peeking through there and it goes right back. There's no space between those. All right, there is our basic shape. This was a tough one. Give yourself some, a try. Try to just observe for what you've got. And I am also going to draw in this little front turn. There we go. All right. Let's get to the mixing of the colors. I'm going to uh, blow out all the eraser pieces that I have in my palette before we start. So crawdads come in all kinds of uh, shades, I'm sure. So just if mine don't match up with yours, do your best to match it. I've definitely got this a lot of this olive green happening. 
and this is on my palette way too bright so I'm going to dull it down and to do that today I'm just gonna add I'm gonna start by adding some brown I have a few different shades there we'll see which one I think this warmer brown will get me there there we go yeah so look at the back of that product that is what I'm seeing there I also need like a deeper darker green that that blends into like this and I want to there's also a bit of this with a little bit of teal in it do you see that kind of this color so I've added a little bit of teal which is like that to a dark green to get those edges for it so we need a little bit of all that I forgot to put my wiping device on my arm which is my fancy name for an old clean sock okay I also want to get just some brown there's definitely just brown in this so we have the, and I want a really warm brown you can see it's not cool with like gray tones it's warm with like orange and red tones to it we're also going to need some actual orange and red so I'm going to come over here um, that's pretty bright. Well, let me see about this orange. I think we can use that. I think that's pretty close to what we have on here. And this is a little bright. I'm going to add a little red to it. And then to, I think that I'm going to keep that because that they're small amounts, but they are pretty bright. So I'm not going to dull that down. A couple more colors I see are a maroon. There's accents of maroon. And we need a very light, a lot of the body is that very light um, tan or yellow, like a cream color. So I'm going to just put, I'm going to try both. I have a little bit of yellow that's just, you know, add a lot of water to it. And that will be, I don't think that's quite right. I think I might need to add a little orange. Just a tiny bit and then really water that down to get the cream color. In spots I also might just use this tan which looks more close to what I need so I'm gonna get that ready for the legs okay and then last I'm going to get um, some gray ready for shadows and to add to darken colors for the edges And then later at the end, we're going to need highlights. This is a highly reflective creature because he's in the water and he's wet. So to add all those reflections, I'm going to use my gouache. I'm just going to go ahead and activate that now by putting some water on here. So it's ready to go later and it's softened up. Okay, let's get to painting. So the first thing I'm going to do with watercolor, I, I think often of painting light to dark. So I'm going to paint those legs first. They're the lightest thing here. And I'm going to move to um, my smallest of my water brushes because this is just such a detailed and little, um, lots of variations of color and pretty tight spaces. So let's lay down our first layer of color. Yep, that looks exactly what I wanted there. I always find that this is the part where I learn the most about the thing I've been studying because when I think I've looked closely when I come to paint it I find that there are things I discover I I did not see before until I tried to document it in color and that could be anything from textures I see colors I did not see which is often the case we think it's going to be one color and we get in here and find out that it was not that at all it's okay to paint a little bit past um, where these colors actually appear because the green wool it's darker and it's going to cover it up very easily so I don't need to be incredibly precise also, you will torture yourself if you try to be too precise on this one. Um, it will take you hours and hours, so let it be a little loose today. 
let yourself learn about the crawdad. Enjoy what you learn. And don't worry too much if you don't get it exactly as you'd hoped. As I tell uh, students often, when I see some of their first attempts at just drawing and sketching in general, you know, I can see what they were trying to show me. I can see in really very beginner paintings what they were trying to indicate, which means if I can see it, they're going to see that also when they look back over their journal. And that's the hope, right? That when we look back, we remember why we added that color or what we noticed or wondered while we were entering this specific part. Maybe some dots would indicate the texture. And do those dots always look exactly like what was actually on there? Maybe not. But if they remind you and you remember what it was and the next time you encounter that thing, you see what you documented and it's familiar and you can grow in your understanding, you've done your job. So just enjoy it today. I'm just putting this color anywhere I see a little hint of it. I mean, it's just, it's just kind of peeking out everywhere. It comes up a little bit here, definitely here. And I'm even just gonna paint it in. We're gonna cover most of that up, but there's a little bit. A little bit here and there along the edges. Okay, let's go to the next color. I am going to work now. Uh, let's see, we could really go anywhere, but I'm going to go with this teal green because I just think it's really pretty. And I want to see what it looks like on here. So you can see it starting in here. And it's fine to do this part while. Um, if you run into like here where it was still wet, that's okay to bleed uh, nicely together. Those colors do bleed together on the on the crawdad itself. Oh, I've dripped. Here's a cool, nice thing about watercolors. Usually you can take it back out. If not, you can make a note there later and they'll never know it was a drip, right? It's okay. We'll just let it go. I see a little hint of this color here. It's pretty light and it's going to mostly get covered up, but we want to add that layer, the, the depth of it, because you know it's there and you see it, so let's put it there. See the same thing here. It's going to get darker when we put that next green in, but I still see it and I even see I'm gonna water this down a lot and just put a hint of it here. Cause right in here I see a little bit of that shade around the joints here. And then definitely down here on the tail is the deepest shade of this color coming through. painting in a rainstorm today so you might hear that coming through. It's a good day to be inside and painting. Okay I'm going to glance back. I'm going to add a little bit more here just to add the shadow. A little bit more here. And then I'm going to come up here. I didn't get this the first time. I'm not going to add too much there actually. So I'm going to take some of that back out with my paper towel. Just lift it out while it's still wet. Because I'm going to cover it up, but I don't want to work too hard to cover it up if the color is going to be really different that I put on top or, or kind of light. All right. Looking good. Oh, and also here, I'm going to water it down a little. And I see some right along in here of that shade. All right, now 
let's go into our uh, more olive tone. This is going to be one of the main colors we see all over. I see. I'm just going to start in the top and work down so I don't drag my hand back through it. I'm going to try to paint pretty quickly. And I'll probably fast forward this for you um, so you can just see me quickly put this in. Okay, that's the main places for the olive color. I'm gonna quickly move into this deeper brown, especially back here on the back, while it's still wet. I'm just gonna dot it in, so I don't wanna add streaks, and I don't really wanna move um, all that olive color around too much. I want to keep that where it is. Okay. And then we're also going to use a little bit of the maroon. There's a hint of it here in a few places. I do want to clean up the edges though. I want that to be very crisp. And I'm gonna come back in and add this because it's just not as dark as I'd like it to be yet. I'm gonna do the same thing up here. We have some of that darker brown. Okay. I'm going to move into this deeper green and work up here. and end those maroon. And this one even has orange in this side and working its way down. There's a hint of it along here too. I'm gonna pull in, actually I now see another color I need which is maroon and dark brown. 
right here. I'm not gonna get too close to that green. Cause I don't want it to blend. And I'm just gonna add some actually brown and black that I didn't think I needed when I started, right? But then look how dark that is here. So I'm gonna put that in. I'm gonna come over to this side and add some more of that color. And that fades to that dark green. I'm gonna move. Oh, I'm gonna move away from the claws now because I want those to dry for a bit before I mess with them anymore. Um, so I'm gonna move back down to the tail. This has some of this really dark green that I'm gonna add some black to because it really is quite deep. I'm just gonna go ahead and paint in those C shapes. This side is pretty smooth. I'm going to come in and add that green. I'm going to mix a little bit more of that up. With a little bit of the teal. For this side. Okay. I'm gonna pull the black over here because it really is all over on this half. We'll dot it, dot it on there to weight that down. And pull some more of that green to move it over. There we go. All right, let's go back to those legs. We haven't been there for a while. I'm gonna get some more of my olive colored green that I added. I'm gonna add some darker brown now and work on the body a little bit. We'll see, it's still pretty damp, so it's gonna blend. If you're okay with that, then you can proceed. I'm gonna add, just kidding, I'm gonna add some of this green here. So that's what this is working up to right between the eyes is a deep dark green. So we'll add that darkness. I don't want it that dark, but it's pretty dark. I'm gonna mix a little olive and that green together here. trying to leave a couple, I'm going to try to do a couple things here. I'm leaving this little orange piece because um, it will be very challenging to put orange on top of green. So I don't want to do that. And this is way too bright, so we're, we will be dulling this down, but for a first layer, it's fine. So you can just Leave that clear to put the orange in. Don't have to worry as much about the eyes because black will cover up everything. So don't be as concerned about that. Let's get some of that dark green back. We're gonna mix in some of our maroon shades. See how that comes into the head and blends with that green to create that nice brown, warm colors. I'm gonna pull some of this maroon and brown that I mixed. Even though you can't really see that line that we drew for the head, 
portion of the body, we're gonna try to paint in those lines so that later when we come back and add that dark shadow in, it's easier to find and our colors have been worked toward it on purpose. I'm also going to add find the dullest brown I've got and put that in here, the dullest green. Because it's definitely not grass green in there. So I need to adjust that, which we can do. All right, we're gonna work down here with some of that maroon and brown too. of water to allow yourself to blend these and we're going to pull that green back over. All right, let's just uh, soften all this edge with some of that cream tan color. And then that's all we're going to do there. Let's go work on the legs a little bit pretty quickly. We're going to come to this, we're going to use this green and the nice dark green. Between those two we should, I'm going to try to do this without laying my hand in all this wet paint. And you can just soften the edges with just water so it will blend into what we already painted there. Do the same here. A little bit around this corner. A little bit greener. And then down here, it's a little bit darker and duller, so I'm going to use a little bit of this and that. Try not to touch the body because that's still wet. We just worked on it. And this is much darker. It's really actually quite camouflaged on that rock. to the other side. Got just a little bit of green down here. A little bit on top of this. And then the darker green out here. Again, we're not going to agonize over these details. Because there's a lot happening here already and this is plenty involved and we're getting a lot a lot put in well. A little bit through there and then let's move up this leg got these triangle shapes coming down and we'll just soften that edge with a little bit of water come on up and do the same up here And then out there, add that little bit of red pieces around those joints. Working in there. Put some more of that maroon. All right. We're getting there. Add a little hint of that maroon here. And also that will just create shape. And we've got some nice bright tips here and here. I'm gonna go back in and add those accents where I can. That's pretty dry. There's that. 
We didn't get to paint that little part yet, so I'll just do that. And this is that much darker color coming up to the edge. There we go. All those colors so close together. So neat. Got this piece coming off here. And again, I'm just gonna use water to soften those edges as I put them in. Bring that down. Let's keep moving. Let's go over here. Add in a little bit of that color that we can see. Soften it with some water. Blend it in. It's a lot of that maroon on the joint. And some of this teal also working in there. We have a really nice dark, even hard to tell what color it is with the reflection. But I can see it blends from warmer to greener. And then we're gonna add in some of those um, orange accents that we see, a few of them. We'll add show these bumps coming up along here. I'm gonna brighten this one since it dried and blended. And then I want this to be really dry when we put this orange in, so I'm going to wait on that. We can go back to the legs though and add that a little bit on each one. Just to indicate where those colors are. Definitely some there. It's a little bit much, so I'm going to take that out. And then let's go ahead and um, work on this little area to finish. Start wrapping up. You can see we have a little bit of orange through here. And the rest is this tan. You can paint the eyes now. That would be a good time to let them dry so we can add their reflection. They definitely bulge, right? And I'm painting that black directly from the pan because I want it the deepest black. I don't want this diluted at all. I might need to add a little bit of water if your brush won't. Won't blend, smooth it. Okay, and then we've got that maroon out here on the end, which I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna, I use, have this, I'm gonna just go ahead and dull it all with some brown, because it's just, just too bright for what we need. Got these little cylinders, which we paint as rectangles, coming off at different angles. I'm going to paint in between this dark, like a brown green. I'm not gonna touch my cylinders though. And then this is the tricky part. You need a nice smooth hand. A 
pull that out. And then we'll take this one. This one's actually, if you notice how it crosses the claw and turns much lighter, we're gonna do most of that with our gouache, which is a good time now to go back, if it has dried in the process of painting, to go ahead and re-wet that while we finish up the other things. Let's add some remaining orange accents here because the reflections play just, play just such a huge part of this painting today. Paint that orange in. Almost all of our, and then we can also come in here with a nice deep green, let's blue, let's get, don't want blue. Let's get that dark, deep dark green for the joint between the body. Getting this angle of this line is really gonna indicate the shape. So the V, the v turns right here, and then we're gonna get this, and it actually curves up further than you might think. So come up there. We're gonna do the same thing at the base of the tail. And then we're going to indicate these curves of the tail. I'm gonna use my darker green and black to show some of those lines. Okay, looking back at our photo now, I think the main things that remain now are the reflection. So I'm gonna just dot in a little bit of darkness on that side. And we're gonna look back, we're gonna add Ooh, that's a lot of black. That means my paint, my black has been very activated. We've been using it. But I'm using this. I wanted to show this line. Comes up there. You can use a few different things to do this, but now it is time for those reflections, and that's what's going to make this um, come to life. So let's make sure you got plenty of gouache ready to go. Again, you want this like a toothpaste consistency. So if it's super watery, like the rest of your watercolor, you're going to need to let it dry a little bit or add a little more um, to a different section so we have the right consistency. If it's too watered, it just becomes transparent when it dries. So you don't want that. Okay. So let's start, let's just start over here and then we'll work our way down. Another way, yeah, just gonna add this and then we're gonna sweep it out. And then to lighten it, again, we just add a little water to let it blend out and soften to indicate those reflections. And you can pull it out a little bit too. To go where you want it to go. I'm gonna dot it. Down to the tip and then add just some random ones there. Same over here. And the same over here. All right, well then let's move down to here. We have these lines coming up and over. here and then that's uh, we have a couple we didn't show too much on the legs but you can add a little bit in because there are some reflections down there 
Okay. The back, you know, before we do that, I'm gonna darken it because I just don't think it's um, as dark as it should be. Down here at the base. Do you see what I see and how there's like this line coming up? And we just didn't indicate that yet. So let's just take a minute and do that. Which means we'll just need to come back later to add there's just a very little reflection. Right along these edges. I think it's more important to get the, the coloring right here. And I'm even gonna darken that a little bit more with a black brown and let that, because it's already wet, it'll blend out. And I'm gonna do that for the main part up here too. I'm just gonna blend all those colors together. We're just gonna indicate those darker spots because they're there and we are trying to show what's really there. looking better right that looks more like what we're seeing which is what we're doing here okay so that can't be reflected yet but the other claw can I'm just kind of like dancing this around indicate the lines, the general shape. We've got these dots all over it. So we're doing both texture and reflection in this. here and over there right there on the legs I'm just seeing this tiny row of dots it goes all the way out to the end and then there's a few very small ones same over here very small some more of that maroon get enough to add these details and then back to our reflection on the final leg down here a lot of that joint very little bit along the tail, but it definitely makes a difference when we add this in. We can go back to the eyes now, because we, right now they just look dull and flat. So let's add these curves. To 
help those stand out. Same with the antenna here. And it's along the left side all the way out. If you'd like to take the time and add those little horizontal lines to the antenna, you absolutely can incorporate that detail. I'm not gonna do that in the video though. Be a little too painstaking, all right. And then we should be able to add these final lines. on the body. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to that because you can see it drug dry, which is not the way a wet reflective surface looks. So we're gonna put just a little bit of water to blend that out. And then we're going to Add a little bit along this line. And over here. Just a few spots. And then the final thing we'll do is all those dots. which at first I don't think we really pay a lot of attention to, but they're certainly there. Even, even really small ones up here. You want to do, you definitely want to do this last because once you put the gouache on, you can't add any more washes or shadow or anything like that. It'll all just, blend together and that's probably not what you're going for. There's still a few here but they're definitely not as many as there are in other places for the uh, dots. You can see that that uh, gouache that I watered down right here became transparent so I can go back you can just go back over it if it's too if it does disappear on you. It's got a few more. Same for that line, it started to disappear on me. It was just too watered down. Add a few over here. to indicate that and we didn't do that up here yet either guys you did it this was a really difficult um, and challenging doc uh, documenting for your nature journal way to stick with it way to try something hard learn something new, and I hope that you really have observed a crawdad in ways you had never done before, and now you feel like you know this little guy better than you did before we started. Thanks for painting with me today, and I look forward to painting with you again soon.